Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 16th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I already had this podcast recorded and then was checking Twitter one more time and found that yes we do have now a public exploit for CVE 2020-0601 this is the crypto API vulnerability now the problem is a little bit more subtle than what we have seen in some of the past TLS vulnerability in that the library when it verifies whether or not the correct certificate authority was used to create the signature it's only matching the public public key and parameters, not the generator. And with that, it's fairly easy to come up with a certificate that is signed using a private key that just matches the parameters that are being verified by the library. Overall, the code being published here is just a couple line of Ruby code. You can probably do it with two lines of open SSL. First one that reads the parameter from an existing certificate. Second one that creates the new certificate with matching parameters. The challenge still left uh, to the reader is to find an actual set of authority that's using ECC. That should really not be all that difficult at all. You, of course, have to also find one that is able to, for example, do code signing. Not all set of authorities allow that. So we'll have to see where this goes from here, but I guess uh, Thursday, Friday, you can expect uh, some binaries arriving that appear to be validly signed. Uh, this is now becoming very quickly sort of a script kitty exploit. I think uh, at this point, the critical thing that you should do is create a decent sized subset of machines that are patched in your network. If you can't patch them all, and I, I realize that's difficult, hopefully you'll be able to do it uh, by Friday, but I doubt everybody will be able to do that. Uh, if you can patch sort of a, a reasonable subset of machines in your network, then at least you will get that Windows event lock alert that Microsoft added with the patch. So you'll have sort of a sensor network to detect if someone is being attacked using this vulnerability. Now, I think uh, one thing that will help people out here is that a lot of uh, endpoint protection suites, in particular Windows Defender, have added signatures for malicious certificates here. So that'll give you another layer of protection. We'll see how this all works out. Let me know uh, what you find and if you spot any actual exploits. For any more details, we'll keep our diary updated. And yes, it also has links uh, to today's uh, webcast where we went over some of these issues uh, with uh, this uh, vulnerability. But I don't want to spend the entire podcast again on this single uh, Microsoft loss. We have more patches to talk about. Oracle today released its regularly scheduled quarterly critical patch update. And well, in this edition, you'll get patches for 334 different security vulnerabilities. Now this number sounds large, but first of all, remember Oracle only does that once a quarter. And secondly, this is across the entire Oracle product uh, realm. So in this particular edition, you'll get patches for 93 different products. There are a couple of flaws that sort of stick out. Yes, uh, there are some remote code execution flaws, for example, in Tomcat, that's always a big one. Uh, there is also one in the database product, the, of course, core sort of standard, that's what Oracle is known for, the database product. But we have a couple of others that I think are noteworthy. WebLogic, uh, I'm always looking for that because that has been sort of a fairly reliable source of exploit attempts in the past. And we have three vulnerabilities here with a CVSS space score of 9.8, meaning that yes, it allows for remote code execution. It doesn't require authentication and the attack complexity is considered low. Second one, then of course, PeopleSoft, again, another one where we have seen fairly active exploit attempts 
attempts against vulnerabilities in the past. And yes, uh, it doesn't disappoint. We have two CVSS score 9.8 vulnerabilities. The first one is actually in Apache Commons, a library that's used by PeopleSoft. And this vulnerability is from back in 2017. Pretty sure there are exploits out there for this particular vulnerability, but attackers still have to figure out how to use it exactly against uh, PeopleSoft. So you may have a day or so to get it all patched. Nothing too exciting with Java, which is uh, sort of a little bit of a surprise here. Java, of course, is probably the most widely distributed uh, Oracle product out there. Well, and that's it for today. Don't want to take up too much time again after the long podcast yesterday. With all the issues we had these last couple of weeks, I get a lot of sort of feedback from readers, listeners, that security teams in some areas are starting to get sort of a little bit worn out. So what I recommend is just patch everything on Thursday and then take Friday off. Uh, tell your boss uh, Friday's okay to take off Johannes set. So you just have to get everything patched on Thursday. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Unless of course you take Friday off. Bye.